I'm going, like I say, you got to be an accountant, okay? You can't just sit in the truck and drive it. You got to know what your costs are. You got to know what your profits are. You, and I do that for absolutely every trip I do. Every trip, okay? Uh. So I'm super excited about the many nominees we've gotten so far for Overdrive's 2023 Trucker of the Year program. Built to recognize and honor the success of independent owner operators, whether leased or with authority, all around the nation. One of the nominees you heard up top, that was Kelvin Schmidt, based in Dassel, Minnesota, after childhood and much of his adult life, too, in Canada. He's trucked, though, for more than a decade now uh, after immigrating to the U.S. and after other careers. All that trucking done as an independent with authority. I'm Todd Dills, Overdrive Editor and your host as usual for this February 10th, 2023 edition of the Overdrive Radio Podcast. Owner Operator Kelvin Schmidt was our January Trucker of the Month, putting him in the running as a semi-finalist for the Truck of the Year Award. I encourage you, too, if you've thrived even through the tough conditions of the last year, or if you know of a deserving Owner Operator who fits that description, Get over to our nomination page for the Trucker of the Year Award and nominate yourself or someone else. It's open to owner-operators leased with authority, operating up to a maximum of three trucks as part of the business. I'll drop links to the nomination form in the show notes for this podcast and in the post that houses it at overdriveonline.com slash overdrive hyphen radio. In today's edition, we're going to hear much more from Trucker of the Month, owner-operator Kelvin Schmidt, who's early learning experience cemented that close cost and profit tracking strategy you heard him mention up top. He's learned several things the old hard way, as it were, including the value and maximizing uptime, however you do it. Then had other little issues and I just got sick of it because it, all it was was wasted time. It took them two months to paint the truck. Two yeah, months of right. downtime, right? The importance of operational shifts, equipment choice, and basic driving tactics to achieve the greatest fuel mileage possible. I used to get five miles to the gallon. You know how you don't make money? I put it all up. Five miles to the gallon, right? The huge dividends that can come back with close attention to maintenance and alignment in particular. How's 400,000 miles out of a set of steers sound? The Michelin steer tire is worth a lot of money. But I don't know any other steer tire that's gone 400,000 miles. Successful owner-operators will always have their eyes on the curve ahead, anticipating what's coming, as Schmidt tells it. you got to think ahead. You can't just think at the moment when you say, oh, just give me the cheap $300 steer tire. Uh, 40,000 miles later, it's all cupped on the edge. I've done it, you know? So I've learned, I've learned a lot. And that's what it is that's in this industry. In this industry, you got to learn things, you got to stay ahead, you got to know your costs. And that's why I bought a new truck, right? That's right. After a series of used vehicle purchases, difficulties with maintenance, with downtime, Schmitz shifted to new purchases, to keeping the truck under warranty. He's on his third new Volvo now, just took delivery of it, in fact, the week before we told his story at overdriveonline.com late last month. It's a VNL 860 find pictures of it via that story also in our truck of the year website section drive the truck, okay? it's that simple don't let the truck drive you you drive the truck after a quick break for a word from overdrive radio's sponsor Howes, we'll drop into more with schmidt detailing his maiden voyage more than a decade ago now hauling freight as a flatbed hot shotter and the long evolution to what he does today Pulling dry vans power only with broker and carrier T Brothers Logistics out of Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Keep tuned. Now that winter's here, it's time to prepare yourself for the conditions you will encounter. By adding Howe's Diesel Treat at every fill up, you can prevent your diesel fuel from gelling in even the coldest temperatures. While it safely removes water, adds lubricity, and prevents deposits, the nation's number one anti-gel will help protect your engine and provide you with the added power you crave. Backed by the only no-tow guarantee, Howes Diesel Treat will keep you rolling no matter what weather comes your way. Learn more at HowesProducts.com. Howes. Tested. Trusted. 
guaranteed. That's Howes, H-O-W-E-S, HowesProducts.com. Here's owner operator Schmidt. The business started, I, I lived in Dassel, Minnesota. I'm married and I have six children, three boys, and three girls. Wonderful family, wonderful wife. It's all about relationships, right? Yeah. With, with your customer, with whatever. But anyways, back in when I first started this, I, I said, you know, I got to find a way to make enough money because I want my wife to be home with the children. I don't want them to be raised by daycare. And I want to be successful at it. So my, my theory was, okay, I got a wife, six kids, right? Four kids, whatever, when I first started, three kids, whatever it was. I think it was actually yep. one kid to start with, okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? Because, yep. well, it was two because I started this in 2011. Because I, I, I worked other jobs and then I, I moved from Canada to the U.S. And I, I worked odd jobs here and there. And you just couldn't get ahead, okay? Couldn't get ahead of the game. So I said, I got to think of something to do that I know I will be successful at for myself and for my family. So I said, you know what? I know how to drive a truck. I learned on the farm. Then I studied. I read all about the rules, right? DOT rules, DOT, what you have to do. Then I, uh, I have some friends that were truck drivers way back when, and I went to school with up in Canada. And I said, called them up, Frank, how are you? What do you think? Well, Calvin, you, you just, you know how, and I was self-taught, I guess you would say, uh, sure. by educating yourself, you know, watching, learning, and the most important aspect in trucking, which I think is a real asset, is you got to have good credit, okay? You have to have good, really good discipline. And I have a little, I got a background where I was brought up totally disciplined. You're going to do something, do it the best you can. Put your heart into it, put all you got into it. You will be successful, right? You, 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 it's, it's just, uh, you know, you got to be disciplined. You got to be great. You got to be an accountant. Let's just say that you got to be really good with money. So I got this little one ton, right? I thought, oh, I'll try this. So I bought a one-ton Ford, bought a gooseneck trailer. I even put a little sleeper on the one-ton, okay? Oh, really? Okay. And I went and, cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got a sleeper custom-made for it in, in Dallas, Texas. I said, well, I'm going to try this. Well, you know, being new at this game, I was picking up partials and stuff, and I realized, you know what? This is not the kind of truck to use for trucking. I learned really fast that, you know, Power Stroke 7.3 with a 36-foot trailer, you can put weight on it, but you go through tires once at a month, and you go through oil changes, like, you know, you're supposed to change, you know what I mean? So the maintenance, uh, I did all that, then I said, I'm not making enough money to live. So I thought about it again. Okay, I got to redo this. How long were you doing it with that setup? Six months. No. Well, well, well. You learn when you when you're seeing the numbers and the reality of it. I was I joined a load board first, right? And I'd get my loads off the load board. Always, I've never driven a truck for anybody but myself. Okay, yep. didn't go to Schneider, Dart, I, none of that. I just hunkered down and started learning. And I've been very successful. Uh, like I say, six months in the hot shot deal, you realize you're not making enough money. You're just spinning your wheels, right? It's working, but not well enough, right? So I went on to the next, bought an international little tractor. You listen to too many people and too many salesmen, and you learn from that too, right? I bought this little tractor, same thing. It was a single axle tractor, uh, same trailer. And 
I did that for a couple of months. And then I realized this is not right. This is not going to work. Were you trying to approach it similar uh, way freight wise to what you were doing with the high shot? This is a full right. head trailer yeah. you had. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had the same trailer, but a little bigger tractor, and I tried to okay. get it to work. And you know what? It still didn't work right. You still can't haul enough freight because everything's heavy in the flatbed world. Okay. And I said, well, this is enough of that. Advertised that, got my money back out of that. And I bought a big, I bought another, a real tractor this time and a 50 foot or 48 foot flatbed right there i am with my old my real tractor dual axle tractor right carry eighty thousand pounds total got this beautiful flatbed and i did that for years well the, the tractor i changed out that, that one the next tractor just got so costly to repair all the time it was also an international. Yes, it was an international. Yeah. 2007, you know, you listen to people, they tell you, yeah. get pre-emission, blah, 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 blah. Well, I listen, and then I learn, okay? Well, that was the wrong thing to do. Because that poor 2007, I bought it. Lucky I paid cash for it. I thought, well, I'll pay cash for this and try it out. Well, in that first year of paying cash for that 2007, that little 2007 cost me $60,000 in repairs in one year. Once again, I'm saying this is not good. I'm going backwards again. Well, not totally backwards, but you're still not making the income that you can make. And I know that, right? So I used to work off a load board, and then I got a hold of brokers, and then brokers would say, well, do you want to pull a load for us? I'd run up to northern Canada with my load, and then I'd bring uh, hay bales and straw bales back from Canada into the U.S. I did that for a while, right? And then the old, I called it the Green Hulk. The Green Hulk, I had enough. It was a green international. I had a Green Hulk on the side. And I just said, I'm going, like I say, you got to be an accountant, okay? You can't just sit in the truck and drive it. You got to know what your costs are. You got to know what your profits are. You, and I do that for absolutely every trip I do, every trip, okay? Uh, so I said, you know what? I got to figure out how to get my costs under control, right? So... I finally got what I had to do, and it's worked ever since. I took that, I sold that Green International, twenty thousand dollars. Out the door, bye bye, see ya. So sad, don't want to see you again. And I said, <laughs> now I, I got to do this right. So I went to dealerships. I uh, so what I did actually, I, I bought a Fitzgerald glider truck, uh, for an auto. And that was another, that was another. <laughs> what, what year was that? Or 2011, yeah. right around 2011, 2000, I don't know. Let's say 2013. That's better. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That's exactly right. 2013, I go by this Fitzgerald glider sight unseen. I have down there with a big old check in my hand, right? hundred and whatever it was, $110,000. Thinking, oh, I got the right situation now. It made money, but it only lasted. I sold it with 100,000 miles on it. It wasn't wasn't the drive line that was no good, to be honest with you. The setup didn't work well in the winter. Okay, I had so many problems with Air dryer freezing up and airline freezing up because the air dryer is way at the back. And I and I got a full warranty on this. So I'm taking it to Freightliner. Right? They're fixing this yep. and then all the paint then all the paint came off. I'm washing the truck one day and the paint just rolled right off of it. It's in big sheets, okay? And okay. I'm I'm going, What the heck? The paint's <laughs> yeah. falling off. Right? I, I'm actually washing the truck in Saskatoon, Canada, 
took a load up there of concrete stuff, washing it, put the spray wand in the spray, you know, nice hot summer day, cleaning the bugs off, washing it, and four foot squares of paint are just flying right off the truck. Wow. Right? And this is in the first 12 months. This is about six months in. It's a new and truck, the, too, right? Yeah. Brand new, brand new, yeah. brand, brand new truck, right? Brand new. And I'm going, oh my word, paint's falling off. I panic, not panic. I get on the phone, right? Take pictures of it, send it up to the freight liner dealer, and I said, I washed my truck and all the paint came on. The paint's coming off. How's that? Well, so they end up repaint the whole truck, right? then had other little issues and I just got sick of it because it, all it was was wasted time. It took them two months to paint the truck. Two yeah, months yeah, of right. downtime, right? Right. So as soon as I got it back, I cleaned it up, which was never in bad shape at all. It still looked like a brand new truck, just had new paint on it. And I put it up for sale, sold it for $100,000. Then I got smart. Okay. Then I looked around at all the dealerships. I walked into a Volvo dealership. It was, the office section was closed. Okay. It was after five o'clock. I had a great plan. Went to the back shop. And one of the mechanics was outside bringing in a truck. I said, you got a couple minutes? I want to ask your opinion about these Volvo trucks. And I gave him my little spiel, and uh, a couple days later, I walked into the Volvo dealership, sat down with the salesman, and I said, you know what? I'd like to buy a new Volvo, 2015, brand new Volvo. What do you got? What did that he mechanic tell you? He told me that these trucks are very reliable. They're good. And I said... You're not telling me that just because you work on them, right? He says, oh, no, I would never lie to you. I, I'm a mechanic. They break. Certain things break down, but generally, they're, they're a very reliable truck. I said, you know, and we just started talking, you know, and showed yeah. me a truck and a motor, and then I came back and walked in, and I said, okay, I got great credit, I believe. Here's 20 grand. I want to put that down and I want to buy a brand new Volvo. And then I said, you know, I'm going to tell you my scenario. I want to get a factory warranty that covers all the components. Volvo is a Volvo motor, correct? Volvo transmission, their own rear ends. It's their whole truck. Because the other trucks I had problems with was Eaton Fuller would blame the Cummins dealer for the fail in the transmission, and you'd go back and forth. It's not our fault. It's not our fault, right? As soon as I found out that the, that the Volvo dealer had their own stuff in their own trucks, right? Walk out of the dealership with my brand new 2015 Volvo. Smile on my face. Still got my flatbed trailer. My big flatbed. I'm pulling for brokers. Brokers, you got to have a relationship, okay? You know, when you're on a load board, you you see one job that's paying ten thousand dollars, okay? The trouble is that people jump around, okay? They jump from one job to the next, and they're always looking for that high dollar one load. Well, that one load doesn't bring you any more business, so. Sure. I started working for brokers, then the brokers got to know me, and then I would re do repeat business with the same broker. Never never lost any revenue, got paid for every trip I did. That's what you have to find. You gotta make relationships, right? To their customers, I represent the broker, okay? That's, that's who I represent. That's the, the company that I pull freight for, I'm, a representative for them okay yep. so i have to act accordingly 
I know I got to know everybody that I go to and I repeat. Calvin, come on in, you know, come on in, have some yeah. coffee, whatever. And you just got to be like a clock. You got to be driven. You got to be absolute. I, I, I'm disciplined. I run 600 miles plus every day that I'm out. That's how I, all of my stuff is time delivery. You got two days to get to New Jersey from Minneapolis or uh, two days to New York, right? Two day, right. Three days out to California. So you have right. to be committed to that customer. And I'm not talking just the broker. It's their customer. You got to be, have a relationship with them. They know you're coming. You're supposed to be in that dock by 6 a.m. Well, get there, back in that dock, go in the bunk, go to bed. They unload you, right? They unload you. They're done their job. I've been in the sleeper for 10 hours. I got my next load back to Minnesota. That's what I do. I go out and I, I, I get a load. I go out. I stop, get it taken care of while I'm in the bunk sleeping. Uh, go hook up to another trailer or get another load, get loaded and go back home. I have six children and a wife and they're really important. And that's why I chose to do this. And I've been doing this ever since I ended up selling my flatbed because I never used it anymore. A couple of freight operations, a van, and I'm loyal to them and they're loyal to me. Right. Stagecoach. Uh, Mary, a uh, stagecoach out of uh, just out of Wisconsin, and they what they did is they they just sold. That's how I started going for this broker, Mary and Gary from Stagecoach. That would be Stagecoach Logistics out of Prescott, Wisconsin. And as owner operator Schmidt noted, last year their van business was acquired by T Brothers, headquartered in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. If you've read my reporting on Kelvin Schmidt from last week. You'll know I spoke to Nick Finley from T-Brothers there. Finley lauded Schmidt's time management, which you just heard him speak to. Said Finley, It can be hard to find a guy who manages his personal wealth as well as Schmidt too. He understands fuel economy and rates per mile and what that all looks like, end quote. And should look like for profitability, more importantly. When I went from flatbed to the the van, I realized my mileage is better. I profit is better because I'm pulling a van. People don't believe that, but I lived it, right? Flatbed, heavy freight, fuel mileage is low because it's not very aerodynamic on the flatbed. And the rates really are not much different anymore. So you gotta, like I say, you gotta be an accountant. You gotta know your trips. You gotta know what you're pulling. You gotta know where you're going. you use your Randy McNally, you go down the toll roads and you pay your tolls and you get to where you got to be and you got to buy your fuel right. What kind of and fuel mileage keep... are you getting um, out of your, out of your Volvo out of my... today? The second right one you're now, on now, right? Yeah, you know. my second brand new one with uh, my third one sh- was built yesterday, as a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, so I'll, I'll be probably getting that in a couple, three weeks. And that should do nine and a half miles to the gallon, eight and a half consistent. And I mean, everywhere you drive, not just empty, not just full, not on flat ground. I run the speed limits and I, I pulled sevens, seven point six with this truck. And I drive this truck. Okay. You know what I mean? I'm not driving 55, not, you know, I'm in the seat on the highway, running highway speeds, period. To me, 7.69 for seven. I have 728,000 miles on this one. And that's my, that's my real, if, the, you know, average okay. 7.69 since I've owned this truck. So to me, that's great mileage. Of course, in the winter, it, it goes up or down. Summer goes up, you know, you can call it eight and a half in the summer. I used to get five miles to the gallon. You know how you don't make money? I put it all on the back. Five yeah, miles yeah. a gallon, right? So right. the new Volvo, which they claim will do 
eight and a half miles to the gallon on any terrain at any speed, up to 85 miles an hour. They did a new couple of new things, which I'm looking forward to. I, I have original brakes in this truck. <clears throat> 728,000 miles, and I have original brakes still. And those are disc brakes, that, right? Yeah, disc brakes all the way around. I, I truly believe the first thing I did when I bought this truck, I took it over and got an all-wheel axle alignment. I put Centromatics on the steer tires. My Michelin steers, I got 400,000 miles out of a set of Michelin steers. 16 ply, mind you. But it's because you do the maintenance, okay? You, you know, you, you, you got to check your truck. You got to take it in. You got to rotate. My drive tires, I have not rotated one, one tire. And all eight of them are worn exactly the same. No low spots, no high spots, you know. But it's all in how you drive the truck and maintain it. That, that all axle alignment makes you money. It saves you money. The Michelin steer tire is worth a lot of money, but I don't know any other steer tire that's gone 400,000 miles. So I put a little money up front, saves a lot of money in the back end, right? You know, and that's how you got to think. You got to think ahead. You can't just think at the moment when you say, oh, just give me the cheap $300 steer tire. Uh, 40,000 miles later, it's all cupped on the edge. I've done it, you know. So I've learned I've learned a lot, and that's what it is that's in amazing. this industry. In this industry, you got to learn things. You got to stay ahead. You got to know your costs, and that's why I bought a new truck. Right? Put it this way: the the old truck that cost me sixty thousand dollars to keep it running. So that when I came up with this buy a new truck, you know, my 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 bills are fixed now. I know. That it's cost me twenty eight hundred and seventy seven dollars a month for a truck payment. Not only does it help you when you get a new truck, you depreciate it out over three years. You will get to keep more of your money in your pocket. Okay, that's that's what it's about. It's not about well the new truck's two hundred thousand plus. That number doesn't really mean anything. Right? You you have to keep control of your costs. And the only way to control your costs is to step up to the plate, get the truck, you know, pay the banker, get the depreciation. You'll end up putting more money in your pocket and you'll be reliable. Reliability, a truck that's not sitting on the side of the road is a truck that makes you money. People say, well, I got one that's paid for. I said, I, I've tried that. Yeah. Because the problem there is when it comes to tax time, you have nothing to deduct. Right? You gotta think like a businessman. The idea of owning your own business and running your own truck is to make a good living. Okay? You're not gonna get rich with one truck. But you will be able to raise your family. I don't live payday to payday. You know, you got a little money put away, whatever. But that's how you do it. Yeah, a typical week for you is um out from Minnesota, out to one of the coasts yep. and back. Yep, yep, exactly. Or I run down to the bottom of Texas there. I've done that at the time. Minnesota goes straight down the road, zoop, all the way down in deep into Texas, come back. But most of my stuff is running the East Coast and West Coast. In a week, then I'm home. I do not do restarts on the road. There's no reason for me to. Right? I'm in the middle of the country. I can get to either coast and back home. You know, six days tops going to California and back, and four days going out to New York or New Jersey. Two out, two back, done. Right? The big four day work week, but four days that you're out there, you're, you're working. Right? Don't be afraid to do 600 miles a day. There isn't a day when I go out, well, let's do the math. When I go out to California, the first day is over 700 miles, legal, of course. Running the speed limit, run the speed limit, right? Roads are good. Get your piece of road. That's another thing. You got to you gotta drive the truck. You, you get out what I call is my own space, okay? There's nobody behind me, nobody in front of me. I don't 
drive in little packs like the old days of, uh, and people do it all the time. So I see it. You got four or five trucks here, eight feet apart, and they're just running down the highway at 75 mile an hour. No way. Not me ever. That doesn't work. Right. If I get on my piece of highway, I can see well all the way around the truck, be way far in front of the truck. You know, they got these little speed goats out there. I call them speed goats. I think they're antelope or something. But those little prog horn, little horns on them, you know? Right. They're famous for trying to run in front of your truck. One of those guys runs in front of a, of a big convoy of trucks that's eight feet apart. <laughs> so it's yeah, it's not, it's, right? it's not, it's not, it's not going to work well. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Right? You know? But it's just, yeah. in this business... You want to drive, be a professional driver, drive the truck, okay? It's that simple. Don't let the truck drive you. You drive the truck. Hey, brothers, right. I have my own authority. I pull their freight. They give me a call. We got a rate figured out. Boom, boom, done, right? Are you pulling their trailers or you own your, your Yep, your their van? trailers. Okay. No, nope, okay. I pull their trailers. They get staged at the companies that you're... Uh, dealing, yep. uh, delivering to yep. and picking it, up from, yeah. Yep, so. yep. They drop trailers. I drop them and drop an empty one. Pick up a full one. It's so it's great, a great way to do business. Eddie. Rates going to my truck are consistent, very consistent. They're good. They're good rates. Yeah, yeah, very good rates. You know, uh, how do I say this? After this may sound good or bad to you, but after all my fuel, all my tolls, I, I figure out my profit every trip that I go out, okay? Yep. I do, like, I, I, I'm worse than an accountant, right? I mean, on every back, every sheet, every job ticket, I got a form I put on there, fuel, DEF, toll costs, every cost that I, that I, that, that happened for that specific trip, okay? Yeah, because every trip is every trip is different. different every terrain, trip, different, e even yeah. even if you go to the same place, the fuel costs you got to buy your fuel right. That's one thing that I'm a real stickler on. Okay, people say, "Well, I don't fill it up till it's empty." Well, okay, that's not how I work. There's certain places around that I have a fuel card which I get savings with, right? From T, from T Brothers, and it's my money on the card, right? You put your money on the card, then you spend it. But you can also, on an app, you can look up uh, all the fuel stops along the way. So when fuel is $5 and I'm buying it for $4.08 a gallon, I'm saving right there, right? So I go my 600 miles and I find my fuel stuff, and I've got everything so dialed in, I know where to buy fuel, where I get it discount and also my volvos i put the biggest fuel tanks you can on them right i got two 150s because when you're gonna buy fuel at that saved price fill it up last week i you know i made five thousand dollars after my fuel and tolls and everything for the trip i made five thousand bucks in my pocket what job can you do that at in one week? How many miles? It was uh, 3,000, 3,200 or something. Yeah, it worked out yeah, that right. for every... And you, and you don't have a truck payment right now, do you? Or, or do you? Oh, yeah, on that yeah I do. Coming your way. You do. Oh, yeah, I will. I will. Uh, but I need it. Yeah. I yeah. need it. Yeah. I need it. Okay. I don't want to pay the tax man all my damn money. Right? <laughs> yeah. You got to find that balance where you keep what you make and spend it as you make it, right? Get the fixed numbers. It's all about the fixed numbers. I could take a hundred thousand dollars out and give it to them at the Volvo dealership, but why would I do that? There's no reason to do it. Absolutely not. Keep your cash. Plenty to think about. Here's a big thanks to Kelvin Schmidt for sitting with us for this episode and as I noted up top, there's plenty more about him. Some pictures of that new Volvo he mentioned was being built as we spoke early last month. 
and more in the profile I wrote about the business at overdriveonline.com. Search Kelvin Schmidt there to find it in the Trucker of the Year section. Or there's a link in the post that houses this podcast for February 10th, 2023 at overdriveonline.com slash overdrive hyphen radio. I'll drop a link in the show notes for you too, wherever you're listening. Overdrive Radio is on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, SoundCloud, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and Facebook, among others. Subscribe on your platform of choice and give us a thumbs up or a review if you're enjoying these. Here's a big thanks for that. You can get in touch with me directly with any feedback via our podcast message line at 615-852-8530. Again, if you've been successful through these tough conditions in the, in the last year or so, nominate yourself for that Truck of the Year award via the Truck of the Year section at overdriveonline.com. Alternately, of course, if you know of somebody else that fits that description, we're happy to hear from you. Overdrive Radio is a production of Overdrive, the voice of the American trucker. It's edited and produced by me, Todd Dills, with the acoustic guitar and other support of trucker songwriter and Overdrive contributor, Long Haul Paul Marhofer. The theme is Legend of the Snake Man by Marhofer, featuring the guitar work of Travis the Snake Man himself, Whammock, Terry Two Socks Richardson on bass, keys by Tishomingo Jim Whitehead, and on drums, Mr. Andrew Marshall. The podcast is backed up further by Overdrive's own news editor, Matt Cole, Social media coordinator Holly Young, executive editor Alex Lockie, and intrepid video editors Lawson Rudisel and Andrew Glenn. Find Overdrive Radio sponsor Howes at H O W E S, HowesProducts.com. See you next time.